Eight bows, all under $200. Which bow is best for you? The number one question I get is what bow should I buy? And thank you for all the support. By purchasing our archery products, this allows me to buy these bows having no affiliation with these companies so that I can give you honest reviews. Specs, speed, smoothness, snagability, and sacrifice is the scale we are testing these bows to. Each person is different and each bow is different, meaning I don't know exactly what bow you will need, but my goal is to give you enough information so that you can make an educated choice on the next bow to buy. So let's get right into it. The Deer Seeker bow coming in at $128.90 at the time of my purchase includes one bow, one bow string, one bow stringer tool, one finger tab, one arm guard, and one arrow leather rest. This appears to be one of those bow kits where they try to throw everything in there in order to make it a really good deal. The tab you get is a split finger tab. So if you shoot three under, you kind of out of luck there. It's got a ribbon as a strap. There is no glue in between the leather and the stitching is a half moon. And so it doesn't come all the way around. The leather actually doesn't seem like real leather. It feels kind of fake. And concluding the tab is a cord lock on the back of the tab. So you can adjust the length of the ribbon. This is exactly the sort of thing that I do not think is very useful. Now that is my opinion, but I have bought many, many tabs in the past before we started manufacturing our own archery tabs. I wanted to see the kind of leather and the quality of leather that's out there on the market so that I could make a design that I personally at least like better. So that's why I got to making our own tabs, but this tab, I'm not a big fan of. I'll go more in depth on archery tabs in another video. Will this work to protect your fingers? Yes, it will protect your finger, but you can get something just as good as this by cutting up an old purse and just grabbing a piece of leather and holding it. So that's basically what it is. Now moving on to their arm guard, there is a rubber chopstick in the middle and that's the one section that's supposed to get the string slapped so it doesn't hit your arm because this canvas-like material is very thin and would still hurt your arm upon string slap. The straps are elastic which is nice they do buckle and click it is a five inch arm guard and it will work probably in the best aspect to hold back a sleeve when shooting when it's colder out so that your sleeve doesn't get caught in the bowstring it would probably cover up the exact area you needed and it would probably work completely fine as an arm guard it just may not give you the glorious satisfaction of putting on an ultimate arm guard. Now the bowstring, one of my favorite features actually about this entire bow, they used a high quality serving material which isn't super common with a cheap bow. The bowstring is a D97 endless loop bowstring, 14 strand. But what I like most about this is they got my lovely good old longer serving section, a nine inch serving section when generally bows at this price range are five to six inch serving sections. So what this means is that when I shoot the bow, the serving covers all the way down past my arm so that if I ever do graze my sleeve or my arm guard, it's going to hit on the serving and protect the bowstring for a long time. This bow does come with a bowstringer, which we'll try out right now. One end's a pocket that slides over your bow limb and the other side is just a big loop that should go over top of your bow. One end on the pocket. Now this bowstringer appears to be pretty long, which is okay. Um, when it's longer like this, you'll just need to spread your legs out instead of doing one in the center. You have to spread your legs out so that you're not pulling up too high. And go ahead and pull the bow up. And there you go, that's how you string the bow. One last note on the accessories, I take an archery tab or a glove as almost equal to the bow I'm shooting because a bad tab or a bad glove, it's gonna ruin the whole experience of shooting the bow. So with saying that, I know everyone's different and has different preferences with either a tab or a glove, or maybe the material even, whether it's thicker or more slick. So this tab could work for some people, but the tab is more important than the arm guard. The arm guard's more of a luxury thing to get a really nice one. The tab is more of a necessity to me. And so with this tab is from my experience in shooting bows, it's not the kind I like. And that doesn't mean it won't work for you because if this is your only option to get a bow with a kit like this and you can shoot with it, I would take a kit like this, not shoot with that tab all day long if that was my only option. I would much rather do that than not be able to shoot at all. I'm gonna go ahead and test this bow. It's supposed to be a 35 pound bow at 28 inch draw. This bow has a half inch throat, so we're gonna draw it to 27 and a half inches to that blue line, which will equal 28 inches total. Tw 
24.6 pounds. How fascinating is that, huh? So this bow should be a 35 pound bow. Come in right here. And what did we get? 24 pounds. So we are 11 pounds off. A total of 11 pounds off out of 35 pounds. That's quite a bit of poundage off. If I'm buying a 35 pound bow, I would like to know that it's 35 pounds or 33 to 37 at the least. But 11 pounds off? It says we have an ebony handle, but then elsewhere it says it's laminated wood handle. And so I'm not totally sure exactly what they mean by that. They are calling this a reflex deflex bow, which appears to be correct. It's not a recurve because traditionally on a recurve bow, you're gonna have the string actually touching the limb. And here there's a little bit of gap. So it'd be a reflex bow, but they also have deflex in here. So it is a reflex deflex 54 inch bow. I'm gonna give this a three out of 10 on the specs because that poundage is so far off. At least it came with the accessories they said it would come with, but the poundage is way off, three out of 10 on the spec scale. Something else to quickly note is their little arrow rest. They've pre-cut it for us so that it's curved and will fit around the bow really nicely when you put it on. The only problem with that is the grain of this is going in the wrong direction. So you're lifting up the grain as you shoot your arrows, which is not good and it's just gonna rip all that off and cause more friction. So in order to shoot it correctly, you'd wanna turn that around. But in doing that, we have an arrow rest that does not fit. So now you're gonna have to trim it, which isn't the end of the world, but something that they did not pay attention to the detail on. All right, the snagability test. If you're new to any of these reviews, what this means is how quick we can snag up the bow, pick it up and shoot it and shoot well. So I shoot this at the exact same target and I score the target and the total amount of points we can get is 500 out of the 50 shots we shoot. And with this bow right here, we got a 400 and 21 when the average of these eight bows I've reviewed has been 406. So, on the snagability test, this is gonna get a six out of 10. It was better than average, it wasn't super great. In all reality, it kind of scored in the air of margin. It could've got a four through a seven, depending on my day of shooting is how it felt. We're gonna give it a six for the purposes of today, which in relation to the other bows we tested will be consistent for a score for this bow. All right, we've got this short bow. Now, one of the things with this one is that it's a pretty light bow, lighter than they said it would be, crazy lighter than they said it would be. And when it's a lower poundage bow, there tends to be less vibration and it tends to be more comfortable in general. So let's take a shot with this and see, see what you can hear. And then I'll tell you what I feel. Ooh, that bow's so smooth. And I think it's cause it's such a light poundage but it's really smooth. Listen again. I might throw up a comparison of another bow shooting so you can see the difference in it. But this bow, extremely smooth. The handles, pretty good, but not perfect. I like other handles better, but that maybe just be my hand. But for the smoothness and the quietness of this bow overall, we're giving it an eight. And I think that's mainly due to how light the poundage is that makes it that smooth. But I do gotta give some credit where credit's due that it is a smooth shooting bow. Moving on to the speed test. One of my favorite tests to perform, but at the same time, one of the least things I care about when I get a bow. But this does have a bamboo core, which I don't know if I mentioned that before. And from my experience, a bamboo core with fiberglass tends to be some of the faster bows, especially if you have a thin limb design and a small bow. Now this bow has such a small draw weight, you would think it would be a pretty slow bow. But in reality, out of my five tests, this bow came to 160 feet per second. Now my camera decided to go look at something else while I was shooting this test, but luckily I was recording them down in my journal. So our average is 160 feet per second which is a very fast for 23 pound bow because the last bow we reviewed was a 40 pound bow and that bow got 171 feet per second. So we're talking 10, 11 feet per second faster, but 17 more pounds of draw weight. So this bow's a very, very fast bow. And I was trying to think like, how can I compare this to 
higher poundage bows and I was like, maybe I can just divide the draw weight by the feet per second. And that doesn't come out very good actually. That would make this somewhere above six feet per second per pound of draw weight. And then like that Black Hunter bow that shot 190 feet per second, that's a 40 pound bow. That would make that one only four feet per second ish. And so after I was running through this in my mind, I'm pretty sure that's not a linear correlation for per pound of draw weight to feet per second. So I don't think that's gonna work out. Something else to keep in mind with this bow is that I do draw it to 29, 29 and a half inches would be my draw length. And so it's gonna be a little faster for me than if your draw length is 28 inches or if your draw length is 26 inches, it'll be even slower. But for this bow on the speed, I'm definitely gonna give it a nine because it is a really fast bow for the draw weight. And if there's someone out there smarter than me that knows a good way to correlate or combine these different draw weight bows and find out like if you can somehow through math figure out if this bow is 40 pounds how fast it would be instead of just buying another 40 pound bow and testing it i would love to see that so someone who's really smart out there let me know how you can do that and we're giving this bow a 9 out of 10 on the speed test on to the sacrifice meaning the value of this bow for the price. How much do you have to sacrifice to get it? And uh, in this sense, they add in all those accessories, but for me personally, I'm not really gonna use them. Now the bow stringer wasn't bad, and I can't compare this to me now. I could probably compare this to me like seven or eight years ago, would I have used those things? I definitely would have tried them out and tried to use them, uh, but with my perspective now, I don't think I would use them. Yet a bow at this price, I think it's a really good option for this price, especially because of how short it is. You know, it depends what you're doing and that depends on what kind of bow you're gonna want. Because for some things you might want a longer bow, you might want a reflex bow, you might like the reflex deflex. So it's very opinionated, I guess I could say. I think this bow would be really good for the price with the exception that I am not okay with getting a 23 pound bow when I order a 35 pound bow. And because of that, that just drops that, that sacrifice scale down because then I might have to return it or I, I have a bow that's way less. I did have my wife shoot this bow um, and she really likes it. Like it's a perfect draw weight for her draw length. She's shorter like 5'4 and for her to shoot this bow, it seemed like it fit her perfectly. I almost felt like I'm too big for the bow, you know, being 6'3 trying to draw that back. It, it's a short bow, 54 inch bow is pretty short for my height and that draw length. With all that being said, I'm gonna give this a five out of 10 on the sacrifice. It would be more like an eight if the draw weight was accurate. But with that uncertainty of draw weight, I don't like to take that risk and get something so far off from what I'm expecting to get. So in conclusion with this Deer Seeker bow, it gets a 31 out of 50 on the Shatterproof Archery Scale, which actually out of these first four we've done is in second place behind the Black Hunter bow. I really do like this bow. It's, it's just that they were off on the specs, which is a no-go. So my wife has a new bow that she's excited about and I'm okay with that. So if you've been looking to maybe get a bow and you want a short 54 inch bow, I've got two more short bows that I'm gonna review. One that's and one that's and this one's kind of like the middle one. And so you can stick around for those reviews. But this bow is a good bow overall. I wish they were accurate with their specs and I would promote it a whole lot more, but I can't completely promote it that much more. So I hope this is beneficial. I really hope the series is beneficial and that you're getting something from these reviews, kind of getting an idea of what's out there for this price range. Either if you're getting your first bow or a backup bow or just another fun bow, either way. Some of these bows have blown my mind and some of these have blown my mind in a really bad way. So I'm really excited to get to some of these more bows. I will see you in the next video. Stay positive, be shatterproof. I'm for you. Be grateful in this season of life. I'll see you later.